My child, in all of your works remember your last end and you should never sin. While you have time, do whatever you can for eternity, mindful that your life is exceedingly short. Soon you must return to the earth out of which you were taken, for dust you are and into dust you shall return. What is the life of man upon the earth? A vapour which appears for a little time, then vanishes away, and leaves not even a single vestige behind. Ever since you were born, you have not ceased to hasten unto death. Neither is it in your power to delay your steps. Think over the time you have lived. Does it not appear like a dream? Yet know, my child, that it shall seem still more so when death is near, which you must meet full soon. For what is even the longest life? Behold, the number of man's days are threescore and ten years, and if he be among the powerful, fourscore years, but compared with eternity, these years are counted as a drop in the waters of the ocean. Nay more, the time of this life placed in comparison with the endless duration of the life hereafter is only a point, but on this point hangs your eternity, whether of bliss or of woe. Had you lived from the beginning of the world, even to this hour, if you were now about to die, what would this life be worth to you when you are entering into eternity, where there are neither days or years or ages, but, w but which flow perpetually onward through an uninterpreted forever? Therefore, my child, understand well the value of time. Time is the measure of life. As much as you squander the time, so much do you lose of your life. Time exceeds in value all of the treasures of this world. With all the riches of this world, you could not purchase a second of time. But with time everlasting treasures may be secured. Oh, could the dead return from eternity, do you think they would misspend even a moment that they would not employ it? Some to free themselves from punishments, others to increase the merits? But alas, nothing is more precious than time. To many there is nothing more wearisome. These are those not only that follow the spirit of the world, but even among such as make a profession of piety, to whom time seems a burden. They complain of its dullness. They live to waste it. They rejoice when they have spent it uselessly, but without irksomeness. And thus they squander in dishonouring me, and in harming themselves, that by means of which they were able and obliged to glorify me, to help their neighbour to gather treasures of merit for eternity. Frequently call to mind, my child, for what purpose you entered into this world, evidently for none other except to prepare yourself for eternity. For what else is the present life if not a novitiate of eternity? While this brief career continues, you have numberless duties to fulfil, for there are your many faults to be atoned for your soul to be saved and sanctified, hell to be escaped, purgatory to be avoided, heaven to be secured. You have a neighbour who you must edify and help to life everlasting. Lastly, you have to honour and glorify me in a befitting manner with all your powers. If you do not do this during this life, after it time shall be no more, and throughout eternity you shall bear the consequences of your heedlessness and neglect. Time is mine, not yours. I have lent it to you, that you may use it to perform those things which I demand or desire of you. If you squander it, you shall one day be held to a most strict account. But if you use it well, you can merit at every moment a new degree of grace and of ever-enduring glory. Listen, my child, frequently. Imagine yourself at that point where time shall cease and eternity begin and weigh accordingly what thoughts will then occupy your mind, both concerning all the past and concerning the whole future. Behold, eternity is your dwelling place. Eternity is your country. Eternity is your lasting home. You are a traveller, a stranger on earth and a stranger upon the earth. Fleetly you pass over it in search of your kindred in eternity. Therefore, all that have been, that are, and that shall be, must repair. There are all the great and the small, the rich and the poor, the well-formed and the misshaped, shall be without distinction except such a one that rises through virtue. Yet a little time, my child, and you shall also be there. 
there shall you live, live an endless life. Behold, what a lofty thought, my child. Time shall wing away its flight, ages shall succeed to ages, the world itself shall perish, but you shall never cease to be, you shall never cease to live. Oh, if you would, my child, understand this rightly. If you do not save yourself for eternity, who will save you? Most certainly no one, not even I, for although I created you without you, I will not save you without you. And if you do not work for your salvation and perfection, how will you do it hereafter? The future is a time which perhaps you do not have, and which you can by no means promise to yourself. But even were you to possess it, the matter would grow more difficult from day to day, and would induce you to delay still further, and then you should stand at the gates of eternity still unprepared. Believe every day to be the last, and live each day in such a manner, that when the Son of Man comes, far from fearing, you may be able to rejoice at his coming. Blessed is he who, when I come, I shall find thus employed. Verily I say, I shall place him over all of my possessions.